Memorial Day, everybody. Uh, beautiful day here. And uh, we've got a new archery range here. And uh, at Harlan, the lake here, where I usually go and hunt and <coughs> all that, but uh, <coughs> they just put a new range up here. It's really nice. They've got uh, it's like uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. They got nice rock here to walk in. Each target's got its own lane. Got nice concrete benches here and some platform benches for fixing your bow or whatever you need to do. But some nice trees here. Really a nice, nice layout. Well, you're probably wondering why I'm wearing all this stuff, my pack and arrows in my pack and all that when I got a quiver here. Um, I have an announcement, put it on Instagram last night. We're going to, uh, we're going to TAC this year. Total Archery Challenge uh, in South Dakota. Excited for this opportunity to go and do that. Um, if none of you are familiar with uh, Total Archery Challenge, I suggest you check it out. And if you have the, the means or the, the opportunity to go and do that, 3D shoot course uh, anywhere around you. Uh, I would I would highly recommend doing it. It's going to be a great time from what I've seen. I've never been to one, but uh, I've seen a lot of guys that are around from around uh, this area. Um, you know, uh, bow only and and whitetail fit. Those guys are from from Lincoln, Nebraska, and and they go. To South Dakota and Utah and all those places, and every year, and, and go go shoot those courses. But uh, I'm really excited this year to get be able to go uh, and shoot these courses. So we're going to be shooting on a Saturday and a Sunday. It's going to be a Sitka course and the Leopold course. So uh, the Sitka course is their toughest course this year down there, and uh, I think. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think I start off with that one the first day, so uh, hopefully I still have some arrows left over from that day and we'll be able to shoot the next day, but they have vendors there, you know, for that reason. And uh, so if I end up shorting myself with arrows, I can always find a vendor down there to, to hook me up. Who knows, maybe I'll find another arrow down there that I really, really enjoy and, and uh, start shooting those. But um yeah it's gonna it's gonna be a fun time it's basically like a, a I don't know it's kind of like a show for archer archers big show and uh, you but you get to go in and participate and uh, really looking forward to it The other thing we got uh, this weekend was a new release. This is the Carter Wise Choice thumb release. And the little bit of time that I've shot with this, I really enjoy this release. Uh, it's really comfortable and lightweight. Fits really good in my hand and uh, I feel a lot more comfortable with this than my back tension. Um, lately my elbows and my shoulder and stuff haven't been working properly and uh, just kind of had some issues with that and feeling that pain when I draw and a lot of times uh, I'll get some some jumping because my elbow hurts so bad but uh, and then I'll I'll misfire but we're going to uh, we're gonna probably use this this year hunting and so I'm really trying to get used to it and it's really a nice release I suggest if you uh, are you looking for a thumb release that you look into the thumb release from Carter the wise choice 
Man, it's beautiful out here today. Yeah, so I step up here, it'll be 20. Okay. I've just th shot three with that uh, little cheap sight, and we're going to walk down here and see what they look like. So this was my first one. This is my second and third one, so I uh, feel really comfortable with that. that set up and these arrows I was hoping that they were gonna shoot good I just cut these a little bit shorter these are a 3, 340 spine arrow from gold tip so these aren't the three the three hundreds that I normally use these are a 340 and I cut them about a half inch or three quarters of an inch shorter so um, they're coming in, I think, with a 100 grain broadhead. They're coming in with about 393 for weight. But uh, if I want to hunt with these, I'll probably have to go to like a 125 grain broadhead just to get that FOC up a little bit and give it a little bit more uh, more weight to it. But yeah, these are going to be these will be good for uh, depending on how they fly at distance. Now this. This setup here, is, as big as that is, is going to be a, kind of a dragger. It's these probably are not going to be real great for long, long distance. But I would say within that 70, 80 yard range, you're going to be fine. But uh, it it should come out of that bow pretty uh, solid. I call these my watermelons. And they got the lime green and the bright orange, red there. They look like a watermelon. They remind me of a watermelon, so that's what I'm calling these watermelons. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to have to take on that archery challenge, better known as TAC. Um, first and foremost, you're going to want a, a, a lot of, of arrows. Uh, I would probably suggest taking a couple dozen if you can. Um, then there's also vendors down there if you need more, but. That's going to get you, should get you through a, a couple courses, I would imagine, um, depending on your skill level. But um, the other thing you're going to need is a pack. Uh, I would suggest if you're going to South Dakota, Utah, Idaho, Colorado, any of those hilly or mountainous places, definitely going to want a pack. And uh, the pack I'm going to take with me is the uh, Pentler from Mystery Ranch. So I've got. Uh, my water bottle will be on my side here. Some guys will run uh, their water bladders, but I think the the I think this is going to be a better option because uh, just let one less thing that you're going to have in your way, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be tough enough shooting with one of these on if you have to. Like if you know you're in a big group or. A, got a big group behind you and you need to keep things moving then you're not gonna have time really to take things off and on so you're gonna probably gonna have to shoot with this and that's what I would probably suggest is, is get get comfortable shooting with your pack you know how to shoot without it but uh, shoot with your bino harness and your pack and everything on so you're you're not uh, caught off guard when you have to shoot with it on and off you know but uh, anyway some of the things I'm gonna take with me will be uh, my rain gear, obviously, um, it's the end of June, so it it could be rainy. It may not be rainy. With this year, who knows what's going to happen? It's just been crazy weather-wise. I'll take my rain gear and uh, maybe a jacket or something. You know, your earlier mornings might be a little bit cooler, 
So if you get a if you get a uh, early start time, you might uh, might consider taking a, might consider taking a uh, jacket or something with you. But um, and these run throughout the year. So depending on where you're at in the country and what part of the season you're in, uh, it's going to kind of determine what you wear. So uh, obviously a good pair of boots uh, up in South Dakota. It's going to be really really trainy. Um, so I'm gonna have a, a, I think my boot of choice will be the uh, Laponias from uh, Crispy. I just got those this year again, and I've got some Thors too, but I think those Laponias are gonna be a little bit more comfortable. They're gonna, they're gonna flex a little better with, uh, with that terrain without having to, if I was wearing a ton of weight, I would want those Thors for the s stability, but the Laponias will be fine for this so uh, not sure if I'll, I'll probably take pants and shorts uh, other than that I'm gonna just have food and uh, I'll have my vinyl harness this is uh, Alaska guy creations vinyl harness uh, really like this vinyl harness and uh, scope or my uh, rangefinder is a Leopold RX uh, this is the 850T TBR so this has the the terrain uh, the it accounts for uh, your up and downs your angles so that should be helpful up there um, other than that there's really not a lot that you're gonna need uh, to carry with you you know it's mostly snacks water have plenty of water uh, plenty of arrows and whatever accessory things you might need for your bow uh, first aid kit you might think about taking a first aid kit uh, I know a lot of guys will carry first aid kits just to be prepared up there in case somebody does have an accident uh, it is archery and you are out in the elements so you never know somebody could trip fall sprain an ankle break a break a break a leg break an arm uh, you know have a arrow blow up and shove a piece of fiberglass or carbon through their arm or something you never know so it's always nice to have first aid kits with you um, so I'll be carrying a first aid kit and my uh, my uh, stuff to fix a bow if I need to but other than that I'm really not gonna have a lot with me um, it's just gonna be just gonna be my arrows and my food and and a, maybe a jacket and that's about it just gonna go to have fun though uh, just going to have fun um, you know that's all it is it's not a scorable uh, competition so we're just going up there to meet everybody hopefully uh, if you're planning on going up there hopefully we'll be able to meet you up there and and if you see me around say hi more than likely I'll have the hat or shirt on uh, I've got the green one on today uh, if you want to purchase these shirts you can on uh, Gorilla Wear's uh, website. I'll put the link in the in the description box for you. But uh, we got a few colors of them. But anyway, uh, yeah. So I'm excited to uh, get this bow out and really get it dialed in and set up properly. But I'm like a kid in a candy store. I just can't wait to get it out and shoot it. And so I'm really anxious to have this thing 100% instead of just using you know old sites on it just to get by but uh that should happen within the next week or so we'll get those mods we'll get the we'll get the new uh draw draw length mod on there and see how it feels and put the other one on the on the traverse and see how that feels also so i'm really hoping that that will allow me to to keep that to keep a good anchor and and be able to pull right now I'm just I think I'm too far back and I'm just having to pull too far that one felt good
All right, let's go look at those. I think those are good. All right, well, I wanted to do a little segue here after the fact. Um, those arrows that I built, uh, I'm sure some of you guys may have noticed it uh, if you're seasoned archers and stuff, but the veins that I used on those new arrows that I built are, are a very high profile. And, uh, you know, for, for anybody that's just starting out building their own arrows or uh, or wanting to you know get into it um, this is a good lesson for you and one that I have not had to deal with for quite a few years because I've always kept my setup pretty much the same throughout uh, my hunting you know career so I haven't really changed a lot as far as arrows and flights and things like that. I've just tried to keep it as simple as possible and not <clears throat> try to dabble very much in setting up new arrows. But I decided to this time and I paid for it because I wasn't thinking through the process of of all the all the components and how everything works together. And what I'm talking about is the uh, the flights that I use, those AAE Hunter uh, Max Hunters, okay? They're very high profile uh, flight. And I had totally not taken that into consideration when I put them in the jig. And I use my boning jig, which is a... Um, it's a good jig, but it puts them towards the back of the shaft. It, you, there's no adjusting. You just have one, one spot that they go into. And unfortunately, <laughs> these are too tall of profile for where that jig put those, those flights. So they hit me uh, right here under the chin, and I can feel them on my, on my chin and stuff. So. Uh, we're getting some facial pressure there with them, and they work fine with my uh, my traverse, but uh, with the with the V3, I just don't think they're going to be uh, viable. And uh, I think they'll be fine for my you know stand hunting. Obviously, I can. Well, let's just go down and look. I just shot all dozen of them here. Uh, at 60 yards out of my traverse and we'll go see what we what we got here I know I had a couple of flyers but uh, like I said these are these are hitting me right under the lip right in between the chin and the lip and I can feel them on my face so I know there's pressure there side pressure and uh, you know they're just not gonna work at, at distances now I might be able to trim them down I don't know I'm not gonna mess with them I'm just not gonna mess with them I'm going to leave them as they are and I'll just use them for like uh, stand hunting, you know, out of my saddle, short shots. They're definitely going to be fine for that. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I can't complain because at 60 yards, you know, we got, like I said, we had like three or four flyers. But, you know, for the most part, I would think... Most guys would take that at 60 yards, maybe. I don't know. I mean, it's not perfect. But I guarantee I could stack those on top of each other at 30 yards. So, um, yeah, and they're just going to be a stand arrow. We're just going to we're just going to have to build a new new set. And if we decide to go with these uh, these larger profile. If we decide to go with these larger profile uh, flights, we're just going to have to use a different jig that puts them out and and, uh, and moves them up the shaft a little bit more. They probably need to be about right here instead of clear back here. 
Now the other thing I might be able to do is put like a, a knock insert and get that out away from the back of that shaft a little bit more but then I'm spending more money on them it's just not worth it I just like I said this grouping that I've got at 60 yards I mean we're you know we're within a pie plate at 60 yards with 90% of them 80% of them you know and I've got two here that I flew the same because well they just flew differently I guess I don't know but the majority of them are hitting right in here so I may I may take these four and maybe just go shoot them again and see if it's see if it's something that something that I did or if it actually is the arrow that needs to be like tuned all right I'm gonna go ahead and shoot these four or five and let you see where they're where they're hitting me in the face so you guys that might be new into building your own arrows and stuff take this in consideration when you're building it's a uh, it's a it's a first day mistake but I should have known better and I was just getting in a hurry to build arrows and didn't think stuff through so this flight right here is the one that's catching me in the in the face. Now I, I've tried to turn this a little bit more upright, but then this one starts playing into my my chin. So I just kind of split the difference here. So let's go ahead and send these downrange and. That one's in the pocket. The other thing I'm dealing with right now is this knock with these, uh, with this uh, loop D loop. This D loop's a little tight. So I might be getting some weird flight there too. These are all things you just gotta deal with, you know, sometimes when you're set, do, doing different setups and Good learning experience. But like I said, they're not flying bad. It's just that for long distance, it's not going to work. Past 60 yards, especially, because it's just too much contact with these uh, you're almost gonna have to have an absolute calm day like it is right now for these to be any but you know to be able to use these any other time but right now when it's dead calm That one's flyer. That one just flew weird and I could feel that on my face. It's still within two or three inches of the spot that I was aiming, but try to move that up a little bit more and see if we can't feel a little more comfortable with it. contacted my finger up top see I'm feeling I'm feeling kind of a double string right now with this it's just not it just doesn't feel good like I said they need to be moved up about that much and then they'd be absolutely perfect but the, I think the reason I didn't think about it is because I cut 
some of these arrows off of the back side so it shortened the label up and only gave me you know on some of these arrows it only gave me three or four inches to uh, to put my flights on so I don't know, it probably wouldn't have worked anyway they would have been over the top of the label Oh, they're slapping. I'm just going to take this off. All right. Let's see what we got here. We got one, one good bad flyer. beautiful evening happy Memorial Day everybody I forgot to say that earlier in the video it is Memorial Day two flyers so 60 yards basically two flyers we slapped them in here side to side so I'm pretty sure those will work in a tree stand situation, don't you? I do. Problem is, these are really light. I'm going to have to go with a uh, 125 grain broadhead with these just to get them to, to penetrate good. We're just going to set them, set them in the back side. Set them in a holder and just wait until, until uh, we do some whitetail hunts or they'd work for turkeys or whatever. I mean, closer distances obviously with that facial pressure, but you saw that at 60 yards, we were still putting them in a pie plate of each other. So uh, it's not like they're totally a loss, you know? So I'll keep them, I'll keep them like this and maybe I can run across another option for a knock or something that might give me that little bit more clearance that I need. I don't know. We'll see. But just wanted to kind of throw that out there for you. So anyway, thanks for watching Publix Eye Outdoors. And uh, we're going to get out and shoot a little bit more here and, and then call it a day. But uh, uh, appreciate everybody out there subscribing. If you got friends and family out there that might be interested in the channel, get them to subscribe too. We're up to a little over 200 now and uh, I'd love to hit that 500 before the end of the month if we can so uh, if you if you know people that might be interested in this kind of content and stuff um, by all means uh, let them know about it and uh, get them get them subscribed and and hit those like buttons and and uh, leave some comments I always like hearing comments I try to get back to everybody on my comments in some form or fashion but uh, yeah, leave a comment and a, and a thumbs up and, and subscribe to the channel. So anyway, thanks for watching Public Eye Outdoors. Stay safe out there in your hunts, everybody. We'll see you on the next video.